With so many successful teams to choose from, this year's award show could go for hours if the organizers wanted to. After all, 10 Tar Heel teams made it to the Sweet 16 or better, and three of them won national championships, including both lacrosse teams and, of course, the men's basketball team. In the first game of the program's 33rd NCAA tournament appearance, the most by any team in the country, the Tar Heels took it to the Stanford Cardinal. It will be a challenge for this year's squad to replace last year's production. Carolina's perimeter players will need to step up and fill that scoring load, while big men Isaiah Hicks and Kennedy Meeks will need to fill Bryce's shoes in the paint. Fans can finally get their first taste of action at the Smith Center on Friday when the Tar Heels take on the UNC Pembroke Braves. There will also be a food drive for people in eastern North Carolina who are affected by Hurricane Matthew. So if you're heading to the game, you can bring canned goods if you want to help out. Now I'm here with senior Blissey DuBose, a defender for the team. Blissey, Maryland's been kind of a Final Four rival for the Tar Heels in the past couple seasons. What does it mean to be able to put them down in the second round this year? The athletes will start walking down the blue carpet in about half an hour, getting psyched for what could be the best Rammies yet. Rivers? The competition only gets tougher from here on out. The South Bracket has the unique distinction of being the only one of the four in which each of the top four seeds made it to the Sweet 16. And a matchup with four seed Butler is up next. Butler has a pretty scary stat in its favor, and that is that the Bulldogs are 4-0 this season against RPI top 25 opponents after beating Cincinnati, Arizona, and Villanova twice. Butler loves to control the tempo and play at its own pace, which is terrifying when you realize the Bulldogs shot 53% from three as a team against Middle Tennessee in the round of 32. Another scary stat is that as much as UNC loves to rebound offensively, Butler loves to rebound defensively, which means the Bulldogs will try to limit the Tar Heels back to the basket points. Another thing to consider is that both teams will be dealing with key injuries. Obviously, Joel Berry had his ankle and hand injuries he was dealing with against the Razorbacks, and Butler's own Kamar Baldwin has been playing through back pain, which could make this game even more interesting. With all that in mind, I'm picking the Tar Heels, surprise, surprise, to beat Butler 78-70 and advance to the Elite Eight for a matchup against one of two college basketball powerhouses, UCLA or Kentucky, as I predict a UNC-UCLA blue blood matchup with a trip to the Final Four on the line. It's safe to say the Tar Heels will have a tough road back to the Final Four with plenty of capable teams standing in their way, but I still believe Roy and his boys want to avenge last year's heartbreak, so I'm going heels all the way. But, of course, knock on wood. Thanks, Rivers. Now, it was a big weekend for field hockey, and not just because of the win, but also because they held a reunion for former Tar Heels who won three national championships between 1995 and 1997. Now, head coach Karen Sheldon has been key for the team's sustained success. Six national championships, 22 ACC championships, 619 wins and counting. Karen Shelton is, in a word, legendary. She has built a field hockey powerhouse right here in Chapel Hill. Despite her small stature and easy smile, Shelton's players will tell you that she's all business. She's definitely intimidating. She's a very small woman. She's awesome. <laughs> I mean, she's small, but um, you know, she she's Karen Sheldon. So you know, initially intimidated, um, grown to love her. It's all about hard work. Nothing comes easy. So being disciplined, being focused. Attitude is everything. First and foremost, I tell people all the time that ask me, do you have favorite players? And I say, yes, I have favorite players. They work the hardest and they have the best attitude. Uh, I'm a fundamental coach, so I'm not the one that does all the fun things. Uh, I think winning is fun. I think playing great is fun. Uh, so I'm not the fun coach. You know, they can do fun stuff on their own time. <laughs> Having coached six teams to national titles, Shelton knows a thing or two about building a strong locker room. She finds the right types of women to be together on a team. She finds the right chemistry. It's just as important as having the right talent. I love working with the kids, you know, um, I think they keep me young. I love the challenge that it's a new team every year. So no, no two teams are ever the same. And it's, uh, it, you know, it's just a labor of love. And that labor of love continues to pay big dividends. With a 6-2 record and a number three ranking, the UNC field hockey team has plenty to be excited about. And the team is getting a boost from the newly created field hockey band. A pilot project for marching band this season, the field hockey band, Bocky Band for short, is trying to bring some extra energy to Francis Henry Stadium. One of the things that Coach Shelton said is that she wants to make the teams that come to our school not want to come to our school because of the band. 
Head coach Karen Shelton is excited about the new partnership between the team and the band. We play better when the band is here. It helps us, there is no question. And I think they were amazing today. Really great, great energy. And it's a great feeling for our team, I know that. Junior forward Gab Major, the Tar Heels' leading scorer, and senior back and captain Julia Young are big fans of the Focke Band. There's been so much more energy and we can always hear them in the stands. And they're so supportive. Everyone really likes them. Just having them at home and being able to have them for every game from now on is going to be a really good advantage because it kind of throws the other team off and it gets us really hyped to play, so it's really nice having them. With glowing testimonies from players and coaches alike and two wins in as many home games, the Focke Band seems to be making a real impact. Yeah, well, first of all, they're a really good team. And a Focke Band or not, they're going to win a lot of games. We're always trying to find the best way to service and support all the teams. So that's my goal, is to help create ways that collectively we can make really special atmospheres for all of our teams. In Chapel Hill, I'm John Assetti reporting. What you see when you come to Vieques is its natural beauty. From lush forests, to gorgeous beaches like this one, to bioluminescent bays that will take your breath away. But it's what you don't see, the untold number of unexploded bombs all over the island. No, Vieques wasn't the site of some massive invasion. Those bombs came from none other than the U.S. Navy. The Navy uh, moved into Vieques in 1936, and that's when they first started their first uh, military exercises here. It's very unique. Okay. We got bombs. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a detail. <laughs> hey, there's bombs. So you better walk on the trail. When the naval base closed in 2003, it left behind nearly 70 years worth of unexploded munitions from weapons testing. It also left tension between the Viaquenses, who resented the Navy, and the new federal landowners, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. All of a sudden, everybody who was fighting against the United States Navy were like, what? We're not getting the land? Who's the land going to? They're our new enemy. Same evil empire same purpose, same snake in the grass, different hat. Despite that lingering resistance and frustration, others recognize the benefits. Since the opening of the Vieques National Wildlife Refuge, the island's tourist numbers have increased by nearly 1,200 percent. The hope is that the visitors, if not the bombs, are here to stay. In Vieques, Puerto Rico, I'm John Assetti, reporting.